Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the very last episode of Clef Notes. I hope you guys are feeling emotional because I'm not particularly, and I'd like for someone to be sad about this ending. Anyway, hi. Alright, so on Twitter last week, I promised that I was going to be covering Song of the South, an infamous Walt Disney motion picture from 1945, I think it was, and I'm going to deliver. And not a lot of people have seen this movie because it is really hard to find because Disney has made such a big effort to get rid of it and to just kind of delete it from the pop culture narrative. Um, however, when I was roughly six or seven, my next door neighbor pirated a copy of this film from someplace or other and presented it to my father as a gift. So I've seen the film, I watched it for the first time in maybe ten or so years, just a few days ago, and the entire movie is just basically framework for a series of, uh, animated adaptations of stories about Bro Rabbit from... Uh, I can't remember the name of the novel, but there was a novel that was supposed to be a collection of stories by this old man, Uncle Remus. I guess he was a slave in the novel. I'm going to have to put some stuff about that up here, probably. But anyway, the film itself is about this kid named Johnny. Um, he and his mom are visiting his grandmother's plantation for an indefinite period of time because apparently his father, who's a newspaper writer, has been posting some really controversial stuff in uh, whatever paper he writes for in Atlanta. His father is writing stuff that's creating so much tension and anger in other people that he feels like he has to move his wife and kids to his mom's house for, well, his mother-in-law's house for safekeeping. I don't know. Anyway, the story's about Johnny and him and his relationship with this older man on the plantation named Uncle Remus. I mean, I... I would say slave. I only hesitate to do that because at one point he just decides that he's going to leave and go to Atlanta. So he gets up and starts to go off and none of the white people make, or the plantation owners make him do that. He doesn't ask permission to do that. They don't have any interactions. His place on this plantation in this community and the way that it all fits together is a little bit dodgy. I mean, that's essentially the entire plot. Just Johnny going to Uncle Remus having really you know, small episodic problems that Uncle Remus advises him on with these bro rabbit stories and, you know, family drama because the point is the family should all be together. Okay, so, I mean, I'd like to start off by saying that by no means am I an expert on the history of the antebellum South or racism in the United States. It would probably be a lot more informative and eloquently put if I was able to bring in someone who could speak from a more educated perspective on these things, but I don't have that. It's just me and the one diversity course that I took as part of the requirements at Valdosta State University, and based on that, I'm going to do my best. Um, the main point of contention that a lot of people have with this film it's very chummy. The interactions between the slaves and the owners, or the, the slaves and the plantation owners, is very friendly. It's um, affectionate, endearing. They don't get mad at each other. I don't know, even when they're supposed to be aggressive. Like, um, there's an escalating plot point throughout the entire thing, or plot thread, where Johnny's mother gets annoyed at some of his behavior, or the way that he is acting out things that he's heard in Uncle Remus's stories about Bro Rabbit and she keeps telling Uncle Remus that maybe it would be better if he stopped telling Johnny these stories and when it comes to a head and she tells Uncle Remus that she doesn't want him interacting with Johnny again anymore she's not angry she doesn't shout she doesn't even she doesn't even really order him to do anything she just says that you know you don't need to see Johnny anymore and then she walks away and I don't know. Tonally, it didn't feel like a plantation owner, like, snapping at a slave and trying to get them to do stuff. It felt like a mother, like, trying to cut a misunderstood friend out of her kid's life, which was what the movie framed it as. I mean, throughout, the slaves just seem very happy and content with their lives, unbothered by their situation. It just, it makes it seem like it was a sort of 
cozy existence where their relationship with the slave owners was friendly and not necessarily on equal footing. At some points, it seemed like the closest comparison I could make is that they were treated like pets. Like they would kind of snap their fingers at the slaves sometimes and tell them to run off and do stuff. But it didn't feel like someone um, shouting at another human being or ordering around another human being that they have control over. It felt like, now you stop that right now. I'm going to take you home and you're not going to get any treats tonight if you keep doing this. It's that kind of tone and that kind of vibe in these scenes. You know, the characters that are or the main characters on the plantation or the main slave characters that are presented are very stereotypical. And then Uncle Remus and the characters in the animated segments, um, they all put on the very stereotypical, like, oh, shucks, yeah, it's Master Tom. I'm going to go down to the cotton field and pick all that right out. It's that. It's basically that with multiple characters all the way through. I don't know. It makes the entire environment seem very endearing, quaint, like cute, and just not bad at all. I don't know. I feel like it's hard to explain the issues with this movie without showing what's wrong with it. And since I have the full thing, I don't know, maybe at some point in the future I could find out a way to upload the whole thing and provide commentary on it. But for now, this is the most that I can say, or like the best way that I can describe it. And I hope it all makes sense. Uh, I'm sorry that this is the way that it's ended. I feel like this has been a really lackluster episode. Not be, uh, and kind of like a quiet ending to this series, but... Now that all is said and done, I hope that I have entertained at least one of you for the past 15 or so weeks, and that you've been exposed to a few movies that you've never seen before, that you've gotten a few laughs out of this, and that I haven't come across as completely obnoxious. It was like the whole point of this was to entertain and... I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep doing this in the future, but for what it's been, it's been fun. Anyway, it's been nice talking to you for 15 weeks, and at some point in the future this may come back, but for now it's winter break and I'm tired. So, watch some of the musicals that I've been recommending the past 16 or so weeks. You'll like them, I promise. <laughs> anyway, bye! <laughs>